Hello and welcome to another episode of Motors for the Masses. Now, Mitsubishi have had great success with 4x4s or SUVs for many years now and the Outlander has been part of that. Petrol, diesel and the FEV or the plug-in hybrid. Hybrids are the way forward whether we like it or not. So let's take a closer look at the vast range Mitsubishi has to offer and take this hybrid out on the road. Let's head off. <laughs> I still can't get used to there being no noise. It's all weird and spacey. But nice and quiet. Yeah, but I don't know if I like that. And even the road noise isn't bad. No, not bad. Well, all these come with, or all the Outlanders come with either a manual or an automatic transmission, except for obviously the FEV which are all automatic because that's how the system works. They come in a variety of models. You've got the base model Outlander Commercial, then the two, then the three, then the three H Fev Commercial, then the Fev Duro Commercial, the Fev Co2, the Fev 3H, the Fev Duro, the Fev 4H, the FEV 4HS, the FEV 5H, and the FEV 5HS. Just a few to choose from, then. Yes. We have been exploring the 5HS, but today we have the 4HS, the hybrid FEV, whatever you said it was, <laughs> and uh, no, it's very confusing. Um, and but also we've had a look at the uh, base diesel model too, which is called what? The diesel commercial, but yeah. the one we have been looking at was the three. Yes. Uh, not the FEV, just the diesel three. Yeah. So it's pretty basic. Apparently the diesel commercial are quite rare to get hold of, and I'm guessing they're pretty much just for farmers and such like, without being stereotypical of course. Or builders. Or work people. Well, whoever wants them really, but obviously not many people do want them because they're better, better. I know, but they do start at a price of £25,000 or £25,500 and that's Cheap. quite a good price for a diesel -y type SUV type Mitsubishi. And new at that, it's, you know, it's, it's, Indeed. it's quite a lot of vehicle. Oh look, an Austin 1100 abandoned plat. Broken down, yeah, well, because course. it's raining. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Mm. We're not reviewing that. No. So as well as the standard driving modes, you also get the flappy paddle gearbox. We are a little bit confused as to how it works though, because obviously it's here, so if you turn the steering wheel, they stay in the same position. But you knock it into B mode, and it comes up on here, and plus seems to be going down three, two, one, zero. And it doesn't make any difference, really. I'm a bit confused by that. So it comes with such features such as touch screen, stereo, it's got all the temperature up and down and everything. Um, heated steering wheel I see on this as well, all the multifunction steering wheel which yep. is adjustable. And what buttons have you got on that side? You've got the, the lane correctness and the do not crash buttons. Speed limiter. So what have you got down there? There's the open the boot button, there's the 
button to switch off the front radar hood you need to stop you crashing into walls and whatnot. Um, there's a parking assist switchy offy button, a lane departure switchy offy button, and something with a star and there's a collision thing. Oh. But yeah. What, you're a star if you crash? Or yeah. You're a star if you don't crash? I think crash. it's indicating that it's a collision type indicator. Thing. Okay. But yeah, there are buttons that switch things off. Nice. With a 2 litre 16 valve, 4 cylinder, double overhead cam, multi point fuel injection engine, this develops 119 brake horsepower and 140 pounds foot of torque. However, combined with the hybrid part, it has 200 brake horsepower as its max power, with 101 pounds feet of torque from the front motor and 143 from the rear. That's not bad, that's pretty powerful. That is a lot of power. So that means it has a quite respectable 0 to 62 time of 11 seconds. And a top speed of an unimportant 106 miles an hour. So, my turn now. Yeah. Now comes the tricky part. You have to get in, put your foot on the brake, say yes, power. It can't because you've got the key. <laughs> Once you've got the key from your bell end partner, It's beeping at me. Into drive. What do we do? At least you know it's got good security. The first thing I can say about this car is it is very comfortable to drive. It is very quiet. You don't need to shout to have a conversation, even at high speeds, I should imagine, which we'll find out in a minute, at a legal speed of course, not a yeah, carriage speed, going you know, with the traffic flow. Motorway, dual carriageway speed. And it's concrete as well, so that would be a real good test. Absolutely. But it actually feels really comfortable. The seats are not huggy, they're quite flat. Yeah, I find on corners you do slide because of the leather. Yes. So I think maybe it's just because they're new and clean. But that to me feels a little bit commercial. And I would possibly expect the 4HS or the 5HS to have better figure hugging seats Maybe, yeah. because the, the bottoms are really flat they've only got a tiny little lip here but if you're slightly wider than the average size six person hmm. I'm just looking for any kind of adjustment it doesn't appear to be any However, it is spacious, lots of headroom, lots of elbow wafty room, and it's easy to manoeuvre. When I'm going around the corner, it's very easy, two fingers, so we're in electric mode, oh, petrol kicks in, vacuum cleaner starts up, we're doing 70. It's all very anti-dramatic <laughs> but this is not what you buy the car for it's not like the type no. r's we did a couple of weeks ago where you're thrashing down here at 70. but let's face it the, the, the speed that picked up to a good speed if you're on a slip road or something that's perfect yeah you don't right. notice actually that you're picking up when that vacuum cleaner kicks in it it's just CBT, goes it? oh you're at 70 by the way mm. so yeah it's all right it's all right it's certainly, like I say, it's it's very difficult to explain. When you get out of a sporty car or a nippy little car and you get in something like this, it's in a different class altogether. Yeah. You know, you can't treat it like a normal car. It doesn't feel like a car, but then it doesn't feel like a van either. It really does feel like an SUV. It does. That's exactly right. And that's a strange thing to say, but it is exactly true. Mm. You don't feel as though you're in a car. You don't feel as though you're in a van like some SUVs. Yeah. You do feel like you're in a large... SUV off-roading type of vehicle. But having said the large part, it doesn't no really noise. feel massive in here. It, it's not, I mean, it's space in here. I mean, it the car doesn't feel big. No, it's not cavernous. It's, there's no. no echo. 
<laughs> no, I mean the, the physical dimensions of no, the outside right. of the car. You're right. It feels quite narrow. Yeah. You know, I don't think I'm going to be going through gaps going, oh, I'm not going to get through there. Yeah, no, visibility is brilliant. Absolutely. These mirrors are massive. Yeah. Well, I imagine there's probably more height to be had, but then this would be in the way, so... I don't know, it just, it just feels good. It's a nice place to be. And I always like a rear view mirror that is bigger than the back window. Yeah. Nothing worse than getting in a car where the rear view mirror only looks at the window. It's nice to be able to see out of the sides see the a little edges. bit. Yeah. Maybe see people. It's got you're that leaving the lane again. Lane corrective thing. No, I got <laughs> close to the white line yeah. there, and it's going. Oh, so there's nothing coming. I'm going to pull out to the white line, and it beeps at me as if to go. Are you going to crash and die? Yeah. Well, we're not we're we're obviously on the cat's eyes there, but it was, uh, yeah. it still warned you before you got there. Here we go. But I suppose it's good. Oh, now I've done it once. It won't do it again. Look. Oh yeah. Well, that's strange. It only does it once, so you can only die once. Clearly. What about if you get the other side? That's what it is. I don't know. Let's try that. Is it closer to the curb? Nope. No. It doesn't care. It's prepared to kill us now. No, it's prepared for me being <laughs> off road. Is what it is. Ah yes. <laughs> So, just going to try a bit of off-roading. Yeah, it goes off-road. Yeah. I think there's <laughs> probably about as much off-roading as one of these would ever see. Yes. I mean, we can try a little bit more. Oh, there's another bit. Let's go up there, look. Yeah, that was all right. That it did take it too. and it destroyed, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, we did. And puddle. Yeah, nice oh, puddles. Yes. Didn't even feel it, look. We've I've driven over a few leaves. Oh, too. there's another bit. Let's try this. It's a little bit steeper here. Oh, yeah. feel quite bear in mind we are high up well that's about 20 degrees that's pretty good so it does seem to do the off-roady stuff too brilliant right let's carry on so what's it like with this Powery, thrusty needle thing. Well, if you use anything more than about a third of the throttle, it comes out of eco mode and into power mode, which presumably means you're wasting power. However, we do have this eco button, which instantly reduces how much the throttle does. So you can use more throttle and still keep it in the green bit. Oh, okay. Or eco mode. And then, of course, when you decelerate, it goes into the blue, which means you're charging the batteries or regenerative power thing. So it's, it's all very all, green. It's then. all very good and green, yeah, pretty right. good. We like it. Okay, so take it out of eco mode and floor it. Oh, that'll do. <laughs> Corner! Help! Death! Murder! It, it went very much into the white there. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. That handle's all right, isn't it? It's quite nice. Yeah, it's not bad, is it? In the back here, it's all very comfortable. I don't feel as though... I'm going to be squashed. However, that is because there's nobody sitting here. Now, sitting in the middle, it does feel higher than this side or this side. And the seatbelt is quite on your neck because it goes right up at the back here. But um, I don't know. I've got the seatbelt holder digging in my side this side and digging in my side this side. So it's probably not great for an adult in the middle here. And if you go around a corner, I can feel myself rolling off the hump. <laughs> so, um, it's a bit bouncy at the back here, I must admit. This one doesn't have the seven seats, but the car that does have the seven seats in the back, I could possibly feel as though I would be sick sitting back there. Obviously, kids are great with this kind of stuff, so who cares? But over on this side, it's actually not bad at all. It's very comfortable, very spacious. I've got a great view out the side here. And in this particular car, it has the 1,000 pound DVD upgrade. So we've got a screen in the back of this one and a screen in the back of this headrest too. So what about charging? Well, a 13 amp supply that you find at home 
will charge this car in about five hours. A 16 amp supply, like the plug-in one we had at the beginning of this video, you can buy them at home. In fact, if you buy this car brand new, you get one with it. That will charge in about three and a half hours. Or you've got the fast rapid charge, like the ones you find in the petrol stations or the motorway services. Now you can charge from zero to 80% in 25 minutes with one of those. However, it does reduce over time the length of the life of the battery. So swings and roundabouts. Now one thing we have noticed, which is really fantastic, is that each DVD has a slot for the disc in the top. So you can watch a separate movie or whatever on each one. And you get a little pair of headphones and a controller as well. That's pretty cool. It is. Okay, so let's talk about warranty a little bit here. Now, it doesn't matter which car you choose, you get a five year, 62,500 mile warranty. You also get a 12 year anti-corrosion warranty and three years European breakdown cover. And for the hybrids, you get a traction battery warranty for 100,000 miles or eight years. That's amazing. It is. Eight years. That's a good, that's good life. That encourages people to go with these hybrids with the batteries and things. Definitely. For me, the only real downside is if you don't like red, your colour choices are black, grey, grey, silver and white. Oh, and they do do a sort of a greyish, dull brown as well. However, if you go for a, a more basic model like the commercial diesel, you can have a really nice blue. Yeah, I quite like that blue actually. Mm. Very vibrant. Insurance varies. It's group 10 or 12 for the commercial diesel or group 26 for the posher diesel. Yeah, for the hybrid, for the 4HS, you're looking at group 22, but the, for the 5HS, you're looking at group 24. That's still not bad, actually. No. So what does the 5HS have over this 4HS? Well, to start with, you have Nappa leather seats instead of ordinary leather. You also get extra badges, a chrome pack, and a boot tray. Nice. You get some LED light bits, a spoiler, and a protection pack. A protection pack is where two bouncers jump out of the rear doors and kick anyone in the veggie berries that dares to come near your car. Allegedly. Apparently. We haven't tested that yet. It's this button here. You also get mood lighting and improved door panels. And the 5HS is the only one that comes with the EV button. And you push that button and the car runs on electric only. And the 5HS is the only one in all the model ranges that allows the car to do that. With a five star Euro NCAP safety rating and some cool little features like lane assist where it puts you back in the lane, like lane corrective thing, and the adaptive cruise control so you don't get too close to the car in front and it keeps the speed, you know, you know what that is. And hill start, brake assist, and a fantastic feature called emergency stop system and monitors. Mo monitors? What these monitors do is basically, if you are sitting in your garage, you stick it in reverse, but you actually put it in drive by accident, the monitors will sense that there is an obstacle and it won't let you put your foot down or it'll adjust the accelerator so it won't let you launch through the garage wall or into the object that's in front. So you have to be pretty daft at driving to be able to crash this car really because it also comes with front and rear parking sensors and a reversing camera there's no excuse to crash this car so it's got the bleepy thing to say where you can go where you can't but also it's got the screen around here so you can see so if you open the door Look, see, you can see the side of your car and beeps go off and everything. It tells you, no, don't be a dingleberry. Close the door. Go forward because you're too close to a bush. So if you are one of those people that is prone to driving into things, then get one. It's perfect for you. So the purpose of these hybrids is to save on CO2s, but is it actually that much cleaner? Well, the 2.2 diesel version of this car has 139 CO2s. This one has an amazing 41. So yes, 
it is a lot cleaner and the best thing about it is the 2.2 diesel has a 200 pound first year tax whereas this is zero now there are downsides to that when it comes on to the price of the car but we'll come on to that later on in the video so what does this hybrid engine look like well it looks exactly like that interesting isn't it Jordan. How much are these old Mitsubishi Outlanders? Well, if you get the Outlander diesel commercial, you'll be paying an on-the-road price of £25,255. What about this old 4HS you've got here? Well, this one will set you back a princely sum of £41,555. Not bad at all. No. And what about if I want the top, top of the range, the 5HS? Well, that will set you back £46,055. OK. Now, that's not bad. However, there is one slight issue with that, and that is the tax. Now, with the diesel commercial, the tax is only going to cost you £140 for the first year, and then £140 every year after that. However, with this hybrid, although the first year is free, you do have to pay the over £40,000 to buy tax. Basically, anything that's £40,000 or more before dealer discounts, you have to pay an extra £300 for the first five years of your road tax. So, I said the first five years, for the first five years after that first free year. So you've got first year free, second year £140 plus £300. So basically, for the next five years after, you're paying £440 a year on tax simply because the car costs more than 40 grand to buy and it costs more than 40,000 to buy because it's a hybrid so you have to ask yourself is the saving worth it is the saving worth it I think it is I think it is actually yes what do you think of course what I mean by saving is the saving in fuel is it worth the extra I still think it is. However, don't forget the savings on the environment that you're also having with a hybrid car. Oh yeah, yeah, that green stuff, yeah. If right. you're into that sort of thing. So what are we talking about when it comes to MPG? Well, for the diesel, you're looking at around about 53 miles the gallon. For this petrol hybrid, you're looking at about 51. Now to start with, that doesn't sound that great, but you have to bear in mind for a petrol car, that's actually pretty good. And don't forget, the petrol motor charges the electric motors as it goes. Electric on its own, you're looking at about a 33 mile range. And again, that doesn't sound brilliant. Unless, of course, you work within 30 miles from your home. Then you can use the free charger you get with your brand new car at home and a 13 amp plug which takes five hours at work. Problem solved. That means if you live within 30 miles of work, you're getting free fuel, free travel. Of course, if you have a job that's 100 miles away, then I suggest you change your job. The other thing to remember is that if the government gets their way, they're planning on deleting all diesels from existence and possibly petrols. So there is an incentive, if not no choice whatsoever, but to buy a hybrid in the future. So we might as well get in and get it done now. Also, the government are giving a £2,500 grant for being a Johnny Greenfingers. So well done you! So let's talk about size, because everyone knows size matters, don't we ladies? It's 4.7 metres long. 1.8 metres wide and 1.7 metres tall and weighs in at 1,860 kilos Mind you, that is for the 5-seater, not the 7-seater because obviously that will weigh a little bit more with the extra seats Looks wise, it's not bad looking at all It's not ginormous like a lot of these SUVs It's quite subtle and quite squatty but it's still quite an imposing vehicle I think it looks like an SUV. It does. It's got these nice wheels, 18 inch wheels, 225 tyres, chromy bits, and it's dirty. Oh, yeah, is that?
You do find though with a lot of these cars that have this opening boot that it takes an age to open and if it's raining and you've got your shopping, come on, come on, come on, you could get a bit wet. Now I'm not going to do the test because we did it before where you push that button and put my head underneath. Oh, not bad actually. I'm going to do it. That's not bad. Certainly better than your Vauxhall. Mm. Not bad. Wow, that's slow. You may also wonder, after you've spent all your energy opening this massive door for the two plug-in hybrid bits, the standard plug-in and the fast charge, where do you put the fuel? Well, it's around the other side. There you go. Petrol. As you would expect with any modern car these days, it has the USB ports and the power points for everything everywhere and the flip out screen where you can put discs behind it and so on. So all of that's there. There's no point in us talking about it in any great detail. It's got what many cars of this era have got. That you expect from cars, bikes and bikes? Yeah, we've got bikes with USB. We have, yes. Cars, bikes and trucks. See? It works. It's all there. <laughs> but the big question is, is it any good? Well, as far as a, a hybrid goes, yes, especially if you're a company car guy or a company in general, because there are huge savings to be had. Exactly, 9% benefit in kind, which you could see you saving up to £5,000 a year, and that is a fantastic saving. That is good. It also, low emissions, no road tax, no congestion charge. Yeah. There's reductions in your national insurance if you happen to have one of these as exactly. your company car. And the biggest thing is the corporation tax. Yes. You could write off 100% of the value of the car in your first year. Sounds good to me. Fantastic. But as your average Joe, I do like the car. I like it. The seats are a little bit of a bugbear for me yeah. because you do slide about because they're just a little bit too flat. Yeah, they need to be a bit more figure hugging. That rear seat in the middle is a bit bulgy yeah and it's not what you'd really expect from an SUV you'd expect maybe the back seat to be flat you'd feel it feel it should be a five seat car not a four seat car so what it sort of leads you to feel like it does it is but it's got great presence it drives really well it's very nice to drive and you cannot tell when it switches from electric to engine it's really really it's so smooth quiet. you just don't know it's very well built and very well put together. I love that. An exception to that is if you give it some welly and it puts the engine on to give you that extra boost, then you can hear it. But of course. If you just cruise in, you run out of battery, it just seamlessly changes. You would never know it's done. No, not at all. And that brings us to the end of this episode of Motors for the Masses. Thank you very much for joining us. Please come back next time when we'll have more cars, more motorbikes. And in fact, in the next video, I am giving away my motorbike so watch out for that video and until then please subscribe like and share and we will see you very soon until then drive and ride carefully but have fun bye bye, bye, -bye.